In this exercise, we need to solve z to the power of 4 equals to 1, where z is a complex number, and we have to plot the solutions on an Argan diagram. And as you probably already know, the solutions to this equation are known as the fourth roots of unity. So let's see how to find them. I'll just write s o l here as in solution. And I'll quickly copy that equation, that z raised to the power of 4, which equals to 1. Looking at this equation, you can probably already tell me two of its solutions. Those being negative 1 and 1. Indeed, if I were to take negative 1 and raise it to the power of 4, then it would equal to 1. And of course, if I were to take 1 and raise it to the power of 4, it would also equal to 1. And so negative 1 and 1 are definitely two solutions. But they are both real solutions. Here, since we're told that we're working within the set of complex numbers, this equation actually has four solutions. And the reason for that is that the solutions to this equation are equal to the zeros of the polynomial z raised to the power of 4 minus 1. So solving this equation is the same thing as finding the zeros of this polynomial function, and in fact I can write equals to zero here. Now, one of the corollaries of the fundamental theorem of algebra, or FTA, allows us to state that since this polynomial is of degree 4, it must have four zeros. As I just mentioned, in this case two of the zeros will be real numbers, negative 1 and 1, the remaining two zeros must therefore be complex numbers. Furthermore, since all of the coefficients of this polynomial are real numbers, indeed we have 1z to the power of 4 plus 0z cubed plus 0z squared plus 0z minus 1, which are all real numbers, the complex conjugate root theorem, or complex conjugate zero theorem, applies here, and we can already state that the complex roots or complex zeros we find must be complex conjugates of each other. That being said, let's see how to find all of those solutions. The first thing I do is rewrite 1 in its exponential or Euler form. In other words, I want to rewrite 1 in the form r times e to the i theta, where r is the radius or modulus of the complex number and theta is the argument. Well, let's see, if I quickly plot 1 on an Argan diagram, and I'll do that up here, so I'll just draw my imaginary axis there, and my real axis here, there we go, and I'll label that r for real and i for imaginary, 1 would be right here, and I'll label that 1. Now, looking at this point on the Argan diagram, we can see quite quickly that the modulus or radius is equal to 1, and the argument, well, it's equal to 0. So technically, we could write this as z to the power of 4, equals to 1 times e to the i times 0. But a more general way of writing this argument is to acknowledge the fact that I could add any multiple of 2 pi I wanted to to the argument and I'd still be at the same point. Indeed, I could add 2 pi to the argument and I'd be right back where I started. Or I could subtract 2 pi from the argument and again I'd be right back where I started. I could even add 4 pi which would be two full turns around the argand diagram and I'd still be right back where I started. In other words, any multiple of 2 pi will do, and to write that, I write z raised to the power of 4 equals to 1 times e to the i 2k pi. Okay, now I want to get rid of this power of 4 on the z, and to do that, I raise both sides of this equation to the power of 1 over 4. And so using the de Moivre theorem, that leads to z equals to 1 raised to the power of 1 over 4 times e to the i 2k pi over 4. Now, using the fact that 1 raised to the power of 1 over 4 is just 1, and simplifying this fraction, I can write that z equals to 1 times e to the i k pi over 2. And at this stage, I'll be more specific about k and state that k will equal to 0, 1, 2, and 3. And that's the general solution to this equation. And I'll just box that. There we go. And in fact, I usually like to add a little subscript on z here, and so I'll just write z sub k. Done. All right, notice here that k can take on four distinct values. The reason for that is because I was raising z to the power of 4. It's also worth pointing out that k takes on all of the integer values from 0 up to 3, where 3 is 1 less than the power to which we're raising z. And that will always be the case. Had I had z cubed here, then I would have gone up to 2. Or had I had z raised to the power of 5, then I would have gone up to 4, and so on. And by the end of this video, you should understand why. Another thing I'll point out is that the radius or modulus of each of the zeros is equal to 1. 
What that tells us is that all of the zeros have to lie at a distance of 1 from the origin. In other words, all of the zeros will lie on the unit circle. And to remind myself of that, I like to draw the unit circle on the Argon diagram, something like what I'm doing right now. There we go. Okay, now to find all four of the zeros, all we have to do is successively replace the k we have here by 0, then by 1, then by 2, and by 3. So let's go ahead. When k equals to 0, this expression becomes z sub 0, which equals to 1 times e to the i 0. Indeed, if I replace k by 0 here, this entire exponent equals to 0. And since e to the i 0 equals to 1, that leads us to the first 0, z sub 0 equals to 1. And I'll go ahead and box that. There we go. On the argand diagram, we had already added that point, and I'll just add a little label to it and say that z sub 0. Now, before looking for the next zero, I should say that I always make a note of the argument of each of the zeros I find as I go from one root or one zero to the next. For z sub zero, it's quite clear that the argument is zero or zero degrees. And so I'll call that theta sub zero equals to zero degrees. Okay, now I look at what happens when k equals to one. And so I write that here when k equals to one. Well, replacing k by 1 inside this expression, we quickly find that z sub 1 equals to 1 times e to the i pi over 2. And e raised to the power of i pi over 2, well, that's equal to cosine of pi over 2, which is 0, plus i times sine of pi over 2. So that's just i. And so z sub 1 is equal to i. And I'll go ahead and box that as well. There we go. On the argand diagram, this zero is still on the unit circle, but its argument is pi over two, so that would be up here. And I'll just add that point. That's this point right here on the imaginary axis, and that's z sub one equals to i. And again, I make a note of this root's argument, so that would be theta sub one, and that's equal to pi over two, or in degrees, 90 degrees. And I carry on, and I look at when k equals to two. So I'll write that here when k equals to 2. Well, replacing k by 2 inside the expression we have here, we quickly find that z sub 2 equals to 1 times e to the i times 2 pi over 2. And that's z sub 2, which equals to 1 times e to the i pi. Now, on the argan diagram, this root still lies on the unit circle, but its argument is pi. So that corresponds to 180 degrees, which is right here. And I'll just label that point as well. That's right there. And by all means check, but e to the i pi equals to cosine of pi, which is negative 1, plus i sine of pi, which is 0. In other words, z sub 2 is equal to negative 1. And I'll go ahead and box that as well. There we go. And I'll label this point over here. That's z sub 2, which equals to negative 1. Once more, I make a note of the argument, so that would be theta sub 2, which equals to 180 degrees. Finally, I look at what happens when k equals to 3, and so I write that as well, when k equals to 3. Well, this expression becomes z sub 3, which equals to 1 times e to the i 3 pi over 2. And looking at this root, we see again that it lies on the unit circle, indeed its radius is 1, and its argument is 3 pi over 2. So starting from this point here, 3 pi over 2 corresponds to 270 degrees, so it would be down here on the unit circle. That's this point right here, and that would be z sub 3. And by all means check, but e to the i 3 pi over 2 equals to cosine of 3 pi over 2, which is 0, plus i sine of 3 pi over 2, which would be negative i. And so I can write that z sub 3 equals to negative i. And again, I go ahead and box that. There we go, and label that on my graph, so that z sub 3 equals to negative i. And the argument in this case would be theta sub 3, which equals to 270 degrees. All right, at this stage we have all four of the roots. And as we can see on the argand diagram, we have the two real zeros that we had predicted earlier on, 1 and negative 1, and we also have two complex zeros, which are quite clearly complex conjugates of each other. Indeed, they have opposite imaginary parts. It's also worth pointing out that these four roots form the vertices of the square that I'm currently drawing in yellow on the argand diagram. And that's quite similar to what we had seen for the cube roots of unity, where the roots form the vertices of an equilateral triangle. And you can probably guess that if we were to solve z to the power of 5, 
then the roots would form the vertices of a regular pentagon. Or to the power of six, we'd have the vertices of a regular hexagon, and so on and so forth. Finally, let me say why we stopped at k equals to three here. In other words, why didn't I consider k equals to four, five, six, and so on? Well, to see why that is, it's quite useful to look at how much the argument increased as we went from one root to the next. From the first to the second root, we moved around the unit circle 90 degrees. From the second root to the third root, we went from 90 to 180, which is another 90 degrees. And finally, from the third root to the fourth root, we went from 180 to 270, which again is 90 degrees. Had I carried on and added 90 to 270, then the argument would have arrived at 360. But the complex number whose radius or modulus is 1 and whose argument is 360 corresponds to the point we started off with right here on the argon diagram. In other words, had I carried on for greater values of k, the other roots I would have found would have just been repetitions of the ones I had already found. And that's why I stopped at 3. And there we have it, that's it for this tutorial on the fourth roots of unity.